Prodigies and welcome back to the channel. Today is a video I'm very excited for because it is the official eight month update of my Australian lungfish. I'm proud to say that I'm like the only YouTube channel basically in the world that has been properly documenting the growth of an Australian lungfish and that's also the main reason that I wanted to get one of these fish. And today we're gonna go through his growth, his tank mate, the overall aquarium setup, how it's changed and everything like that. But before we get into this video, as always, let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land the land I'm filming on, the land that you're watching this video on, and the really amazing who, people who are managing our land at the moment as well, like our councils, our frontline workers, everyone amazing like that. So a huge thank you to them, a massive thank you to you for watching this video, but I say without further ado, let's have a look at my Australian lungfish. To give those of you that are new here a very quick recap, this here is my Australian lungfish aquarium. Four feet long, two feet wide, and a foot tall, which works out to be about 230 litres. It has an inbuilt sump, and it's honestly the perfect aquarium to grow out a lungfish in. And here is the star of the show, my Australian lungfish, who I've kept in this aquarium for about eight months at this point. Now, Australian lungfish, also known as Queensland lungfish, are extremely hard to come by, not just in Australia, but worldwide. And from what I'm aware of, there's only one legal seller which I'm comfortable in recommending to others who are looking to get an Australian lungfish, and that's exactly where my lungfish came from. I purchased this fish for my 18th birthday from my favourite online aquarium store, which is livefish.com.au. And they actually have some amazing sales going on this weekend for Black Friday and Cyber Monday as well. Tons of reduced prices on some fantastic fish species and some great free shipping deals as well. All types of fish suited for aquariums, ponds and full-blown aquaponic systems as well. So make sure you check out the links in the description down below to get some really great deals on some really high quality aquarium fish. But without further ado, let's have a look at my Australian lungfish now. So the first and most obvious thing, for me at least, is that this little guy has grown even more since than the last update that we did. To give you a bit of an idea, he's around about the 25 centimetre mark, so he's very close to that one foot milestone, and I'm expecting him to reach that early next year, definitely before the one year update. Now, he's also become way, way more active, and I think that's coming down to a few reasons. Now, I'll admit, in all of the updates, I have said that his activity level has increased. However, this time, it's completely off the charts because he's actually out in the open most of the day. And I firstly think that comes down to his size, which now gives him a bit more of confidence, and the bare bottom scape, which I've now implemented, and I think that's helping majorly as well. And now, I understand that this isn't the most pretty thing to look at, however, for a fish like this, especially at its current size, it's most likely the best thing to do due to the overall fragility and the benefit of caring. What I mean by this is it's way easier to take care of the aquarium in a bare bottom setting. There's no issue of silicates and resulting algae blooms, rising nitrate levels due to waste or detritus getting trapped in the sand, and cleaning wise, it's just far, far easier. I was also in a bit of a mentality that by providing my lungfish with a lot of spaces to hide that it would actually induce him to be a lot more active because he knows that there are places of refuge. However, this actually worked towards my detriment because by providing him the hiding spaces, he was hiding all the time, which kind of does make sense. However, I actually did remove a lot of these hiding locations that were amongst the rockwork and the driftwood, which has actually made him far, far more active. It was actually only recently that I posted a video of Aquascape in this aquarium, where he was active for about maybe three days and then went to hiding all day. But now it's been almost two weeks since I made this aquarium bare bottom and his new confident behavior hasn't gone down a single bit. I still do have driftwood in this aquarium and there is some cover, but I do think that this can actually be thinned out a lot more. I'm considering to take out a lot of the real driftwood and just keep this fake log ornament which I've added into the aquarium, which provides some great cover, but I can also see him at any point in time because one of the sides is conveniently placed up against the glass and it's giving me a really good vantage point without disturbing him too much. I've also been trying out a few new diets and I found out that he actually takes bites out of plant matter, which is both a pro and a con. It means that I can supplement his diet with greens and fruit matter, which is something that lungfish naturally eat in the wild. 
but it does mean that I need to be a bit cautious about what plants I'm actually adding into the aquarium with him as they may become a bit of a inconvenient snack. However, I also have been giving him the Hikari Lancefish. Now this is actually something I made a video on before, but it was feeding some of my older predator fish. And I maybe feed this to him about twice a week. Generally what I do is take half a fish, so I throw it out, cut it in half a bit brutally, and then directly feed him with my tweezers. And he just takes it directly from there, spend some time chewing it up and softening it in his mouth. And it's just something very, very cool to see. His main diet though is actually a soft palate made by Vitalis Aquatic Nutrition. This is actually aimed towards bottom dwelling catfish like Corydora. However, my lungfish very much enjoys this food and I have experimented with a few different types of palates and this is the one that he actually goes to the most. So it's got a great range of ingredients. It's not really like it's not gonna be healthy for him and it's a great food overall. But now let's have a quick look at his tank mates. He's still with my fancy goldfish. And honestly, as much as I'd like to keep these goldfish in a separate aquarium, space is a bit of an issue at the moment, but it doesn't mind me too much because the goldfish don't bother him. He doesn't bother the goldfish, so it's fine. But I do understand it's a bit of an unconventional mix of fish. In my last update, I did mention that one of my goldfish had somehow lost an eye. I wasn't able to find out why this was till this date, but the little dude has healed perfectly well and he's loving life. He's eating, no infections or any sort of further detrimental problems. He's thriving. The white widow tetras are doing great. However, they were moved to my five foot aquarium with my black widows and the dual litochromus need to come out. I'm currently cycling an aquarium dedicated for them, which I'll go into very shortly. The only other new addition to this aquarium are my owl 397 plecos. I was surprisingly able to catch them with ease out of the five foot aquarium and they've now been moved into here because they've actually reached breeding maturity. They're gonna be moved to a dedicated breeding aquarium as well and it's just easy to monitor them in here and catch them out at a later stage to add to their breeding aquarium when it's ready to go. But for the aquarium overall, this is not gonna be the permanent setup. I'm just refraining from adding anything new or changing the scape until I get back from a very special trip I'm going on very soon. But then I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this aquarium full force. My aim is to give this aquarium a pond style aesthetic with some large flowering lilies, some immersed grown plants and a new custom lid instead of this ugly window fly screen net thing that I have at the moment. And this will most likely happen within the next two months. And the final thing is I've actually come up with a new name for him as I felt that the previous names just didn't suit him all that well. His new name is Gimpy, which is a bit weird at the start, but it has some really great meaning because it's the closest town to the genetic origins of my Australian lungfish being the Pine River. I'm pretty sure that's where his parents or grandparents or however that was were collected. And um, I think it just suits really well with his geographic origin. I'd like to start a collection of lungfish themed art as well, and maybe some display items that I can have placed around both this aquarium and his future six foot display aquarium, which will happen maybe in the next 12 to 14 months if everything works well with the new fish room build. Alrighty budgies and wedgies, I really hope you enjoyed that eight month update of my native Australian lungfish. Now the biggest takeaway for me out of all of this is just how beneficial a bare bottom aquarium can be, even though it actually doesn't seem like it would. Now you see a bunch of times where large predator fish keepers are keeping bare bottom aquariums. And for me, I was never really an advocate or a person that kind of like that, purely just because it seemed very plain, it doesn't really seem like it's giving the fish any environmental enrichment, and it just looked not that great. However, I realized now after making this aquarium a bare bottom that it's sort of that we're looking at it from our perception and, and how it looks aesthetically to us. Whereas for the fish, it actually creates way more benefits because firstly, there are swings or changes that are happening in the water parameters, maybe from the actual hardscape materials or aquascaping materials that you're using. But more importantly than that, it's giving them this wide open space where they can see everything. And if you're giving them a lot of cover and hiding spaces, it generally may make them feel a little bit more nervous because they're always sort of made to hide all the time and they can't really see their environment all that well. So it's definitely a big learning curve and I think it's something I'm gonna implement when I do maybe escape this aquarium but a little bit better than what it currently looks like. And um, yeah, so a big, big takeaway for
for me. But if you have any more questions or if you want to see any specific videos in regards to him or any of my other fish in this room, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. And more importantly, consider subscribing. I don't really ask for this in every video, but especially in a video like this with a fish as important as this, if you want to see his journey over the next lifetime of mine that I keep him, then um, I highly recommend that you do consider subscribing to keep up to date on his progress, his growth and everything like that. So huge thank you for watching nevertheless. And that's it from me. So stay happy, stay safe, stay Australian. Bodgy out. Oh, <laughs>